But Rachel Reeves is offering junior doctors in England a 22% pay rise over two years, plus an above inflation offer for teachers. And the teachers' union says that further strikes are unlikely now that the government has made an offer of a 5.5% pay increase for teachers in England. The Chancellor also confirmed VAT at the standard rate of 20% will be added to private school fees from January next year. Our education editor, Branwyn Jeffries, reports. Schools are quiet for summer now. Before term ended, we spoke to teachers in Stoke-on-Trent who told us this pay award was about fairness. The main reason why I went into teaching, because I wanted to give something back, I wanted to help the community. But there's got to be a balance somewhere between the government and the teachers to get it just right. You're doing a great job here. When we told him today, he described the offer as fantastic news. Over the last 14 years, experienced teachers' pay in England has taken a real hit over the cost of living falling behind many other professions and the unions want that gap narrowed. This 5.5% award is above inflation, it is fully funded, that is what we have been asking for. Does this pay award go far enough to avoid strikes this year? Strikes this year are unlikely. No education the teachers' strikes were hugely disruptive to parents and the economy settled when the last government found extra cash. We're going to Most schools have budgeted around 3%. The extra money is meant to fill that gap. This is the one that's going to turn purple, right? This secondary in Stoke has recruited from Canada and Jamaica because not enough graduates are starting teacher training here. If you don't have a qualified um, subject specialist standing in front of the classrooms, you know that those kids aren't getting the best possible deal. And as a principal, that's not OK. We have to have our children get the best possible deal. We need qualified, high calibre staff. The government has promised 6,500 extra teachers in England. Today's pay award won't solve teacher shortages overnight. Brownman Jeffries, BBC News. So what is the situation with public finances and how serious is it? Our economics editor, Faisal Islam, is here. Faisal. Thanks, Rita. So this was an unusual document published today, which is part pointing a finger of blame at the previous government and part mapping out the future of this parliament. As we've been hearing, there's a list of unfunded spending pressures, including public sector pay, the asylum plans, including Rwanda, and the costs of the railways, leaving a shortfall of £22 billion in this financial year. All not fully accounted for, says the new Chancellor. And the independent forecasters, the OBR, suggested this could be one of the largest overspends outside the pandemic. The single biggest line item in this is public sector pay settlements. Those have all now been agreed by this government, which has accepted all the recommendations of independent bodies. You can see there, Teachers, as we've been hearing, getting 5.5%, NHS workers getting 5.5%, armed forces 6%, similar elsewhere. Now, this is higher than the rate of inflation back in April of 2.3%. So that's above inflation, a real pay rise. That is not inherently abnormal, but it had been suggested by previous government that that could raise inflation. This new government says it won't be inflationary because, look at this, that's the average of earnings across the economy in the first quarter at 6%. So a pay rise for 2.5 million public sector workers after many years of squeezes. It costs over £9 billion, and that doesn't include the junior doctor settlement we've been hearing about. But the government thinks the public wants stability in the NHS and schools uh, and an end to those strikes.